Hi, I'm Ian Bearder from Podil Leather, uh, and in this video I'm going to give you a detailed walkthrough of the build process for making our La Sap MacBook sleeves. Um, if you've bought the pattern pack, you'll have all the details of the, the leather weight, sizes, uh, all the tools you need, and materials. Um, if you haven't got the pattern pack, uh, there's a link below where you can buy it, or you can just watch this uh, as a detailed kind of uh, uh, instructional guide on how to make a, a very simple MacBook sleeve. Um, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, please either leave comments in the, in, under, underneath the video or contact me and I'll be happy to help. Uh, otherwise, uh, enjoy the video. Today we're going we're to be making the Le Sap 13. That's a 13 inch uh, MacBook sleeve, case, cover, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's beautifully simple, so it's, it's uh, uh, it's going to be a very easy kind of starter project if you're new to, to leather work and you want something quite simple um, which you can just kind of throw together and I mean I don't know it's going to take us an hour or two probably to do it uh, plus stitching so uh, maybe an hour, maybe two hours altogether so it's nice and straightforward um, but it's a good starter project because you will get used to using some of the um, the main tools which I'm going to show you in a minute I've got them all here um, there is a part one to this uh, uh, build along series um, which just talks you through some of the kind of uh, the tools so um, uh, if you haven't watched it already you might want to watch uh, that introductory uh, part one that will just that will just explain how we use everything uh, what they're for uh, but this is the really the kind of uh, the meat. Uh, this is the the kind of fun part. This is the where we're going to put everything together, and you're going to end up uh, you know basically glue stitch, cut glue stitch, uh, uh, and end up with a nice new MacBook case. Um, so you need the the pattern pack. In the pattern pack um, is all the kind of technical stuff. It's the sizes, the measurements, the uh, thicknesses of the leather you can use, the different types of leather. So um, you can buy that on our Etsy shop or uh, or drop me an email and I'll sell you a copy. Uh, and all the information is underneath the show notes uh, underneath this video. Um, okay, enough enough of the rambling. Um, we're going to get started. Um, for the, for this for this project, I'm using. Um, a kind of a, a nice brown, dark brown piece of um, what they call uh, horse, ho crazy horse leather, I think. Um, it's, it's not horse, um, but it's got this, um, I don't know why they call it that, but it, it, it's, it's full of uh, uh, wax and they, they treat it. So um, I don't know if you'll be able to see on that, on that front camera, but may maybe here on this top camera, um, it, it's treated so it's nice and waxy. Um, but it, and if you scratch it uh, or, or you bend it, it, it keeps it, 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 it sort of gives it an old, uh, authentic look. It's, very, it's actually a very nice type of leather. It, it's very soft. Um, also on the inside of the leather here, um, it's it's not too hard. It's nice and soft, uh, and it's also not too furry. Um, if you buy some cheaper um, untreated leather, um, often you'll have a, a quite a coarse or furry uh, interior. Um, but this, this, so this leather is very nice for the MacBook cases um, because you can just slide your um, uh, MacBook in and out without, uh, it's not going to uh, rub on this inside. Um, okay, so that's the leather. You can use uh, non-dyed leather and dye it yourself, um, but for this project, just to keep things simple, we're going to use pre-dyed leather. Um, I've got myself a sheet here of uh, one sheet of leather, which is just a little bit bigger than than I need for the project, so I can. I went first thing to do is cut out the um, correct sizes, and then then cut that into two two front and back pieces. Um, if you if you printed the uh, pattern pack with the A three A three, so you've actually printed off the full size version of the pattern, um, you can just cut those out and either just draw around them on the leather or stick them to cardboard and then draw around them. Um, I haven't printed out the full size template, I'm just going to measure mine up um, using a ruler. So we'll do that first uh, and then I'll talk you through the process of putting it together. Um, so the first thing you're going to need, or first thing I'm going to use, is a metal ruler. Um, I've got this uh, uh, framing square which has is, is got a right angle on it um, and it's going to make life a lot easier. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, I know that this bottom edge uh, here is dead straight, so I'm going to use that as the edge that I, I uh, mark everything else off. Um, so I will just now straighten up this uh, right hand side, um, and then I'll have two dead straight and, and I'll have a right angle here, so um, we'll be in good shape there. 
So I'm just going to mark that up and cut off this um, sort of excess on the right hand side. Um, I'm using just a basic craft knife. If you've got some fancy uh, uh, leather cutting knives you can use those or uh, probably a scalpel will do but um, a good sturdy craft knife will, will do. Um, and you want to just make sure um, you pull it into the ruler or the uh, whatever you're using to cut um, otherwise it'll just stray off slightly to the right so I'm just gonna I'll probably be able to go through this leather just in one cut there we go okay so we've now got uh, I think thing, I'm just gonna take off a little bit more didn't quite get to the the bottom side here yeah great um, so there we go we've now got a, a right angle here um, and I can use that uh, to trim everything else down so flip it over Now, before I cut this, this top section, um, I'm going to put my knife away for a second. Uh, and you're going to use this uh, scratch all. So if you haven't used a scratch all before, uh, it's not very complicated. It's just a, basically a pointy uh, tool. Um, and you use this just for marking the leather. Um, you, you don't really want to use ink or pencil or any, anything that's going to leave uh, um, any marks on the leather. So we use a scratch all just to um, draw your lines and then if you, you, know, you can just rub it off afterwards or just, you know, it's not going to leave any permanent uh, marking. You don't want to push down too hard. If you really push down hard on the leather, you will scratch it permanently. Um, so just use it lightly to mark a light line in the leather. Um, you probably can see, if I zoom in here, um, the line that the scratch all has made. Let's just do that, shall we? So... It's left a very faint line. I don't know if you can see it on the video. It's left a very faint line on the top there, which I'm just going to use to um, to draw along. So let's cut all the way across here. Just going to spin it round. Um, when you're cutting stuff, um, don't be tempted. Basically, just be careful. Um, if you do any, any, any sort of, spend any time working with leather and knives and uh, 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 blades and, and needles, you're going to end up cutting yourself for sure. Um, if you're anything like me, I cut myself all the time. Uh, I, I'm pretty clumsy when it comes to uh, 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 leather work and like, the number of times I cut myself or stab myself with a needle um, and, and end up bleeding everywhere. Um, it, uh, it, don't worry, you're not going to die doing this, but uh, uh, it's, it's far better to take care and not cut yourself. Don't copy me. Um, the very first video I tried to make, instructional video, first thing I did was I put my hand on and cut straight across the end of my finger. Um, so uh, uh, maybe one day I'll release the outtakes of that video. But um, just take care not to cut yourself. Um, but my top tip is if you do end up cutting yourself, if you do uh, uh, bleed at all, stop, clean up the cut, clean up your hand, clean up your wound, whatever. Um, put a bandage on it and make sure you're not bleeding anywhere. If, if you, um, sometimes it happens if you stab yourself with a needle and you think it's not bleeding. Um, Basically, you get any blood on any leather leather work, it's going to ruin it. It's just going to it's going to stain the leather, and you're not going to get it out. Uh, you'll have to either put up with it or bin it and start again. Um, you can't wash it out very easily. It just completely stains leather. Um, so so. If you're bleeding, stop, uh, clean your hands up, put some disinfectant on it. Um, I have a, a, a ready uh, to go uh, um, a first aid kit with some bandages and some of this disinfectant uh, just to clean things up if it goes wrong. Um, but anyway, I don't, I don't want to panic you. Uh, you're not, you're not going to do yourself any injuries if you take care. Um, it's just good advice. Um, also, if you, if you can, um, when you're cutting leather, try to cut it so basically, uh, uh, using a hand with a free run. If you're sort of trying to take a shortcut and cut round where you can't see, that's when you're going to run into problems. Um, so much better to swing your board round um, or swing swing round the piece of leather that you're working on, so you can cut it 
without any problems. All right, so that's nice and easy. And there you go. Um, the other thing to remember when you're cutting leather, um, apart from getting straight lines and not cutting your fingers off, um, is to check and double check your sizes. Um, much better to check, triple check, triple check even if you can, um, than to cut and realise that you've cut either at either a wrong angle or you've cut the piece slightly too small because um, you can't stretch it, you can't make it bigger um, and you might have to start again. So, uh, you know, if you're using a nice expensive piece of leather as well, you don't want to run into problems with, with uh, uh, sizes. So uh, always double check, triple check your measurements uh, before you put the knife to the leather. Um, okay, so this one, I've now got uh, two, two square corners here, two right angles. So I'm just going to finish up, make sure that this is the right uh, length. Just here. And we just zoom this out a little bit. We can follow. Okay. So we're just now going to um, take off this left hand side. We've got this, this is uh, right angle, right angle. Uh, it's just this final side, and then we'll have one piece which is twice the size of the two sides, if that makes sense. Uh, okay, so here, th this is a good example. You, I could try and cut it along like that, but I'm going to get into trouble if I do that. So I'll just sp spin it around, and put this along the edge there. take off this excess here. There we go. So I'll get rid of these off cuts. You don't really need to keep these. Um, when I started making stuff from leather I kept every little off cut um, that I, I cut off. And then, if, if, you know if it's a couple of centimeters big and, and it's square and it's usable then fine keep it. But these little um, scraggly off cuts you're never going to use them for anything so um, throw them away. Right, so now we've got a, a, a piece which is twice the size of, of um, one side. All right, so um, I just need to find the center point now and I'm going to run, run down the center. And then I've got my two sides roughly cut um, without the corners, basically. Um, so let me just measure those up. I just need to measure the halfway mark. Um, another little bit of advice is if you're or when you're cutting your leather, I should say. Um, firstly, try to get yourself one of these, these um, uh, self-healing mats. Uh, they're pretty good. They're not entirely self even they're not, they're not a human body. Um, they, if you do put any serious cuts in them, it's going to stay cut. Um, but they're, they're very good at protecting any of your work surfaces. You don't want to be doing this on your kitchen table or something. Can it, you know, uh, you'll end up cutting through and, and, and knackering the surface. So uh, get yourself one of these or, or I don't know if you've got any other large chopping board somewhere where, you, where, where the knife isn't going to do any damage. Um, they're also nice because they don't, they're soft, uh, so they don't damage the blade when you go through the leather. Um, they're, they're relatively expensive though. Um, I think you can find them cheap on eBay or on Amazon. Um, if you buy them in the shop, they can be quite expensive. I think they're 20, 30 pounds. Uh, I don't know what that is, 25, 35 dollars. Um, anyway, enough about the map. Let's find our halfway point. Is be. So I think we can just we can do that a little bit, make life a little bit easier. Do it up here. Scratch a little line along there, that should be halfway, and I'll double check it. I'm just measuring this side as well. Make sure at the top here. Um, the other thing I should mention probably um, is 
if you're um, so if you're if you're basically making a piece uh, if you have got a larger piece of leather that you're working with and you want to cut out uh, basically these two two panels that are going to make up the, the MacBook case um, look look on the leather for any any marks or, or, or uh, like uh, uh, scratches or anything on the leather work that, that you basically that you don't want on your uh, MacBook sleeve um, and if you can then cut out from a piece a clean piece of leather um, sometimes it, it's always worth checking you, you'll get used to it um, looking for little marks I think they're, 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 a lot of them happen actually when it's still uh, when the cow is still alive uh, and it maybe gets uh, snagged by a, 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 a fence or something or it's an insect bite or something like that um, and it leaves a permanent uh, uh, sort of scar on the leather um, some 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 people like that some people actually you know they like the, the inconsistencies in the leather um, you you probably can't see maybe you can see from this top camera this um, this piece of leather I've got here has actually got some black lines, um, fold marks um, along it here. Um, and I selected those on purpose because actually I think they look quite nice. They, they give it a more authentic, natural um, look rather than just sort of bland, uh, uh, flat piece of leather. Um, so when, when, when this, this is cut, it's gonna be, we're going to have two sides basically. We're going to have a front and a back of the MacBook case. Um, so I'm actually going to take care to make sure that I stitch it that 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 those two sides together, so they they naturally fold round uh, and they appear on the front and back of the um, of the case. Um, so if you have any marks like that, uh, it's something just just to watch out for when you when you're selecting the leather. Um, otherwise, if you, if you know if you if you're not thinking and just cut out your, your two squares, you can end up with a you can end up with a chip or a scratch or a mark there in the leather uh, in a place that you don't want it. Um, all right, so I'm just going to run down that middle line and then we're going to have our two front and back pieces of leather. Um, then we'll just curve off the corners so that we've got a nice uh, uh, rounded edges. Okay. Also, I don't know what time of year or where you're watching this video, but uh, we're in Kiev in Ukraine and it's summertime and it is unbelievably hot. Um, it's only end of June, not, uh, probably actually more like it's 20th of June, so it's not even end of June, um, and it's very, very hot. So uh, if I look a little bit hot and sweaty, um, that's because I am. Uh, it's very, very hot, and I can't put the air conditioning on uh, because you'll hear it on the video, and it, it will be too annoying. Um, the, the things I do for these videos. Um, okay, so now we've got our two, two sides of leather. So basically we've got a front and a back. Um, and they, they fit together there, so the lines uh, follow across. What, what we're gonna do actually now is um, put them over so that they're front to back. Um, so they're gonna fold round. Um, they should sit on top of each other. Okay, so this one, it's, I think because of the, the way the leather is, um, I've got a slight overhang on this corner here. Um, I've cut it just slightly off. Uh, slightly off but don't worry too much if, if that happens to you um, we're going to adjust that uh, slightly with the um, we can just trim trim a little bit off um, if you, you don't want to obviously have too much of an overhang it, it, pieces need to be the right dimensions um, but if you've got a tiny couple of millimeters there don't worry too much okay so we're going to uh, do the corners now um, and because of the design you've got a slightly uh, um, a slightly gentler curve on one of the corners which is where you're going to get the macbook in and out um, then a slightly tighter corner on the other top and, and and the two bottom corners where the bottom of the macbook is going to sit um, are even slightly even tighter than than, than that so um, this is where our uh, uh, circles come in you can use a, a small plate a mug um, and any circle size basically um, so you want a slightly larger one um, if you want to do it exactly as the pattern, uh, again, either just print off the pattern or find something with the right uh, radius according to the pattern pack. I'm just going to improvise and use a, a disc here. Uh, this is a lid of some saddle soap, which is leather soap, um, but anything you've got. Um, it has to be fairly sturdy or you're going to cut through it with your craft knife when you go around it. But um, You also want to take care when you're doing this, if you uh, cut round be, be careful so when you come around you actually do come out the little bit of leather and you don't you don't have a jagged edge there because um, you will notice it uh, and it will look a little bit homemade um, but not in a good way uh, so just take care I'm gonna there we go. In our first, first corner 
taking it gently. Okay. All right. And then we're going to do the same on this corner. And make sure it's nicely lined up. And gently round. All right. Now, um, this corner, so those two sit together nicely, they match wonderfully, and this corner is slightly tighter, so for this corner we're going to use, what can we use? Okay, uh, I'm going to put you on hold and go and find something with a slightly um, softer curve here. There we go, uh, disc uh, number two is an, another a top. This is the top of a, um, some leather uh, uh, finish, a uh, slightly smaller plastic dish, uh, disc. Um, so again, I'm using this, mark it up on the leather. Okay, on my hands on that. Okay. And again, it needs to be on the top here. Okay, if you have any little bits that fray here or anything, slight inconsistencies, um, you can either just carefully trim them off with a knife or um, if you prefer, you can get a bit of sandpaper on there and, and just, just smooth them off. So you've got a nice uh, round finish, um, depending on how perfect you want that, uh, that finish to be. Uh, this, this, this actually doesn't need any additional finishing. So you'll see now, when we put it together, we've got a much uh, a bigger curve on one side and a, and a much uh, tighter curve on, the on that side there. Um, the bottom corners um, we're going to make even tighter uh, and I'm going to use uh, actually this is uh, I don't know maybe you can see up on the top camera here uh, this is a just a little stamp that I made for someone's wedding um, it, you can use a coin and, and basically just a, a, an even smaller disc than the other two that we've just used um, just to do the bottom uh, what will be the bottom corners so uh, I'm going to pop that on and just come off, come around quickly and do these. I'm going to use a slightly smaller blade, it's, that craft blade's a bit annoying to be honest. Mm, probably not as sharp as it could be this blade. There we go, there's one. Um, I suppose that's another good tip actually, um, keep your blades sharp or, or wherever possible use new blades, um, it will make your life a lot, a lot easier and um, trying to hack your way through a piece of leather with a blunt blade is um, not going to do you any favours uh, and you're going to end up either with jagged lines or with little bits fraying everywhere. So um, also take care when you're been in old blades. Um, I have a little plastic tray there where I just throw all the old blades in um, so no one gets hurt. Um, right, so final corner, just run around there. And what, we'll, what the, we will then have is our two sides ready to get in, just trim off that nice bit. There we are, two sides ready to go. Um, yeah. So the reason this one is uh, uh, slightly more curved is just just to give a clear indication of where the uh, where you get the MacBook in and out. Um, and we're going to stitch also on this where we've got the bigger curve. The stitching is going to start a little bit lower down. So you'll see when we come to mark up the stitching and, uh, and um, put it together, it starts lower here and it comes up higher here. Um, you don't want to, if you're making your own design and, and you, you decide to make your own, ignoring our pattern, um, you don't want to stitch right the way up to the top of the, 
MacBook case, MacBook sleeve. Um, the reason being that if you, if you do that, you, you're basically not going to be able to get your MacBook in or out very easily. Um, and if your MacBook is in there, you're not going to be able to get your fingers in in order to slide it out. Um, you're going to run into trouble basically. So um, you, you start a little bit further down here, so you've got a flap, you get your hand in there, pull out the MacBook, no problem. Um, right. So our two sides are cut to, to, cut to uh, size here. Um, the next step you'll see in, in the instructions um, is to put your, your mark on it. Now, this, this stage is completely optional. If you have a maker's mark that you want to stamp on to the, to the leather, um, great, this is where we're going to do it. I'm going to put a, a small mark here. Um, I'm making this one as a, as, a, um, as a gift for one of our colleagues who's leaving, uh, Guy Vladimir. It's a gift, he doesn't know that yet, but I'm just going to put a little mark on here, uh, pod leather. Um, and I think it will look nice. If I had a bit more time, I probably would have ordered, you can use these um, stamps, depending on how much they cost you. Um, you can actually order custom ones of these. Um, it, they're actually very nice if you want to uh, make something really unique, like a wedding gift or uh, a birthday present. You can, you can make stamps with people's names, the date of the wedding, the, uh, the date of birth on there, or you know, their age, anything like that. You can, make the, you can use the stamps uh, quite creatively. Uh, to make items which are you know really unique, re really um, made for them. Um, but I'm just for today. I'm just going to stick a uh, pod leather uh, stamp on there, and you can you can in theory do this once you've glued and stitched the piece together. But it's going to be much harder. So um, I'm going to do it now while we've got our two sides because I don't have a, a press. Okay. Um, are we going to use a clamp and uh, a little bit of water? So next step, stamping. We can get rid of, which side do I want to do it on? I think I'm going to put the stamp on the back side here, down in this bottom corner where the, where the MacBook is going to go. Maybe a little bit. No, I think I'm going to put it... I'm going to put it on the side here. I think it would look quite nice. No, here. Right, so I found the point where I want to put the, the stamp um, and I need a little bit of water for this so I'm just going to grab a little uh, bowl of water and then I'll show you how we, how we put the stamp on, okay? Okay, so uh, to put a stamp on, um, it's actually relatively simple, but um, it would be a lot easier if, if you have a, a press or some way of, of stamping it down. Um, if you don't have that and you're using um, some vegetable tanned leather, some natural leather, you can also just, um, you can use a hammer and, and, and stamp down, uh, if you have a, a handle on the, on the stamp, you can stamp it down. Um, the way I'm going to do it is probably the, uh, uh, the trickiest way, it's still not difficult, it's quite simple, but I'm using these little uh, metal I'll show you up here, these little metal uh, flat stamps which I've had made for me. Um, and the only way I can really push those convincingly into the, into the leather and get a proper stamp on there uh, is using a vise. Okay? So I need a vise and a hard edge or a hard table I can, I can clamp it down onto. Um, and that's the way I'm going to do it. It's not, it's not uh, the perfect solution. Um, but that's, that's, that's the way it is. Now, I, um, you want to take care um, not to get too much water on your leather here. If you're using natural leather, it, it really, any water really marks the, um, the leather. Um, so be careful. Um, I'm just going to wet up a little bit here the area where I want to stamp. Um, I'm going to do it both sides. Um, you don't want to soak it, you don't want to make it too wet, but you want to make it um, wet enough that it's going to take the stamp. Um, it's not a science, um, so I can't tell you exactly how wet it needs to be. You'll get used to doing it. Um, and if you're a bit unsure and it's the first time you want, you've done it, um, just try on a bit of scrap, me uh, a scrap uh, leather. Um, you know, don't, don't mess around on, on the front of your first MacBook case, because if you knacker it up, then you're going to be upset. Um, so try, try on a bit of scrap leather, um, see how wet it needs to be before it takes your stamp. Um, I think that's okay. Um, it's sort of quite wet. Um, maybe put a little bit more on the inside here. Um, keep that dry. Right. So once once the, the leather is wet, I'm going to put this map forward slightly. 
bringing the piece to the edge of the table. And I want to clamp it on. Now, I don't want to clamp it right down to the bottom because this bottom edge will have a stitch line along it, okay? So it'll, it's going to need five, need a, it's going to do it about a centimetre away from the edge of the piece of leather. Make sure it's straight. And then take your clamp. Drop that on there. And tighten it up. Alright. And there we go. Give it a good tighten. I can see that's been sinking into the leather nicely. Tighten it up. There we go. And leave that a little bit. You don't need to leave it too long. Uh, I think the, it's already made its mark on the leather. And loosen it up. I'm just going to go one more time. You want to make 100% sure it doesn't move though. You don't want to, if it moves, it's going to mark the leather in a couple of places and it's going to look a bit shoddy. There we go. So, I'll show you off again on the top camera. I'm not sure you're going to see. I've got a little maker's mark there stamped into it. So, that's a nice, nice customization. Uh, shows where it came from uh, and hopefully Vladimir will like it. Right, um, I'll put my vice away, put my stamp away and I'll put my water out of the way so that doesn't get knocked over and cause any problems. Um, the next thing to do uh, is basically stitch it, uh, not stitch it together, glue it together. Um, the reason why uh, you want to glue all your uh, leather work before you stitch it um, is just to stop it slipping and moving when you're trying to trying to uh, put your holes in it or when you're trying to stitch it. Um, I have seen videos of people stitching bags, stitching bigger items which are not glued together and to be honest I don't know how they do it. Um, it, it looks like hell. Um, you can use, you know, you don't have to use uh, this toxic leather glue, this, this smelly um, impact cement. Um, you can use some, um, is it PVA glue, I think they call it. Um, but it's just not as effective, it's a bit rubbish and it, it will break apart quite easily. Um, so I always use this um, leather glue. You can buy it, it's not very expensive, you buy it for repairing uh, shoes normally. Or you can get big tubs of it for if you're going to be doing a lot of leather work. Um, you basically, the way it works is you, you put it on. You let it dry until it's not till it's crispy dry, but till it's sort of tacky and, and not sticky. And then you just push the two bits of uh, uh, leather together, and, and the glue binds together. Um, I mean, if you want to find out how to use this stuff, there's probably videos all over YouTube. Um, once you've once you've put put it together, wrong mallet. Um, but you will always see on all instructional videos, people once they've glued it together, they get their uh, leather hammer out and they they hammer all the way along the glued edges. Honestly, I have no idea if this makes any difference. Like, I don't know if that is an essential part of doing it. Uh, I just followed everybody else and I do it. Um, it makes sense that if you go along it with a hammer, it, the, the glue fibers are going to bind together. Um, so we will do that. Um, and then we'll let it dry and then we'll be ready to, to stitch. Um, an another, uh, okay, so let, let's do that and I'll, I'll, talk, I'll give you some tips as we're doing it. Um, we first thing to do though is just mark up where we want our stitching to come to and that th that's marked on the pattern pack um, you're going to come up further along this straight edge here um, a little bit further and then uh, less far up this uh, more curved edge so I'm just going to mark those points because we um, I'm going to mark them on the inside so we know where to glue uh, then we're going to mark us just a, a line around the inside so that we, we, we can follow that when we're gluing it okay um, all right I'm actually, rather than use the U ruler, I'm going to use these marks on the chopping board. This chopping board is marked up in centimetres squares, so it's fairly, it's quite convenient actually. Um, so I'm just going to make a little mark there on the inside of the leather. You're not going to see it because it's going to be glued. And I'm just going to run just less than a centimetre, probably six or seven mil along the inside. There. Again, you don't need to make much of a mark, just just a guide so you can see where you're gluing again. 
six or seven mil line in the bottom the, along the bottom there and on this side where you've got the the bigger curve um, you're, gonna come, you're not going to come up as far so I just need to mark how far again I'm just going to line it up on these uh, centimeters in here and come down there's the corner so there we go. Can't mark there. And just run up a rough line there where the glue is going to come, so I can see it comes to there. All right, just there. This one I'll do it even, even rougher um, guesstimate because I've already marked it up on the front piece or the back piece. And just lift it up here. So it's going to come to here. It's going to come to here. Okay. It's going to come to here. And I'm just going to mark another line. And um, don't worry too much if when you're gluing it, you go over this line on the inside, um, because. Uh, once, you're, once you've stuck the two together and you've stitched it, you're going to run around the inside and, and, and with a, either a bone folder, if you've got one like this, or a small plastic ruler, um, even a, to be honest a knife, a blunt knife would do it. Uh, you're going to run around the inside and it's going to break, break apart any bits that you glued together, um, any sort of any, un, un, unintentional gluing here. So don't freak out if you do get uh, a slight, go slightly over these lines when you're gluing it. Um, it's also a good idea to keep the glue away from the front of the leather piece um, because you're gonna, it's gonna get heavy. It's, it, this, this glue is a bit of a nightmare. Um, but again, if you do get it on the front of the bit of leather, don't panic because um, this impact cement, you can rub it. Uh, you rub it quite with your hand, and it will, generally it will uh, roll up into little balls, and you'll be able to rub it off the, the leather work. Um, all right, there we go. So. Two sides now are marked up. I've got, you can see here where I'm going to glue to. And time to get some of this glue on it. Um, everyone has a preferred method of getting uh, glue onto, the, onto leather. Um, you, if you've got a big tub, you'll normally have a little spatula or something for rubbing it on. Um, uh, I just actually prefer to buy these smaller tubes uh, and just do it straight out of the... Um, straight out of the uh, tube here. So I'm going to just uh, carefully give it a squeeze to get the glue coming and then there we go and it's coming and I'm just going to run it along and use the edge of the, use the end of the if you're doing it this way though you do have to make sure you keep the end flat on the piece of leather otherwise if you go off at an angle the glue starts to squirt out everywhere so just take it careful, um, or if you prefer, run a line of, of glue on there and then find yourself a little uh, spatula to rub it all in. There we go. Yeah, you see on that edge it came out a bit faster. I'll deal with that in a minute. Uh, there we go. Now, you're going to stitch this, so the glue is not there, you know, to hold it together forever. Um, it's, it's really there for you to to help you really to get it uh, stitched but that said you want to put a, as good a coat on as possible there we go um, another bad habit of mine is using my finger to rub this glue on um, I honestly have no idea how bad that is for me I assume it's quite bad so um, if you're watching this at home, don't do it. Um, or if you know how bad or how bad it is, and then let me know. If I shouldn't be doing it, then uh, uh, I should probably stop as soon as possible. I'll just run running my finger along there. Uh, probably better to wear some rubber gloves uh, if you're doing this. I don't want anyone to get hurt or have any problems. Um, and you should also use this glue in a um, ventilated space. So open the windows or do it in a big room where you're not going to uh, uh, suffer any adverse effects of this glue. Um, I don't want anyone getting, anyone getting hurt watching these videos. Um, 
All right, so we've got our glue on. I'm just going to leave them a couple of minutes uh, to dry, or at least to dry to the a bit tacky, and then we'll put them together uh, and we'll talk about the stitching. Um, so while they're drying, I'm just going to tidy up a little bit, okay? Okay, all right, so um, these have now uh, dried a little bit. I can, I can run my finger on it, it's not, it's not too sticky. Um, and now I've just got to stick this top bit. Now, you'll all find your own favourite way of doing this, but you can, I'm just going to lay that ever so gently on the top. Um, if, you, if you find that you've made a mistake and you've, it's, you've not, you stuck it down and it's not, as long as you haven't pushed too hard, you can peel these away again, all right? Um, it's only once you've pushed really hard and hammered it down um, that you're going to find they're quite tough to get, tough to get um, apart. So take care. Try to, try to do them as well as possible. Right, so I think I'm going to take it from this corner here. There we go. That's nicely lined up there. Okay. And then the same on this corner. Nicely lined up. There we go. And finally on this side here. Nicely lined up. Great. Now if you've done a good job there. Um, if you if you if everything goes well, you should find that it's actually lying nice and flat. It's not folding up. It's not all wrinkled. Uh, and if you've done a, you're cutting well, you know, basically two very smooth edges there. They're all going to fit. You're not going to have any uh, jagged bits or bits hanging over or anything like that. So quite happy with that. Um, it's looking good. Uh, ah, next bit, the hammer. Okay. Oh, that's been nice falling down. Um, you can see how I cut myself, can't you? Um, okay, so hammer, get your hammer out. Yeah, hammer all the way along. There we go. Uh, there we go. Nice and flat, all glued together, ready to stitch. Um, but before I go about stitching or cut, putting the holes in it for the stitching. Um, oh, you can see I've, I've got a little bit of glue on the front now, I'm just going to rub that off. Um, I'm going to let it dry. Um, like I'm honestly the most impatient person ever. I, I, I hate waiting for stuff. Um, and when I, I, you know, I just want everything now, now, now. Um, and when I started working with leather, I, I just kept taking shortcuts. Or, or I kept trying to take shortcuts. Um, and it's a disaster. Don't do it. Um, be patient and do everything. Uh, in the right steps and when you glue stuff let the glue dry okay um, if you don't let the glue dry if you're tempted to just go ahead and start st stamping holes and stuff and doing your stitching uh, it's going to slip because it's not it's not it's not dry um, and your, your stitching line is going to be wonky and it's just not going to look good um, and you'll be annoyed with yourself that you didn't wait so um, let the glue dry before you start stamping, uh, the, pricking the holes for your stitching. Um, but what we can do while we're waiting for the glue to dry um, is we can mark our stitching lines on here. Um, and that's where our next tool comes in handy. That is the, uh, the wing divider. So I'll show you up on the top there. It, it's uh, essentially just two spikes uh, clamped together at the end and, and you can adjust the distance between them. Um, very simply, we're just going to, you run one side along the piece of leather uh, and they're useful for going round corners, okay? You can just mark your stitching line with a ruler, you'll get a dead straight line, um, but you, it's not so easy to go around corners, so these are very useful. Um, for this project, I'm going to mark the stitching line about four millimetres in from the edge of the piece of leather, okay? Um, so first thing is I need to mark four millimetres. There you go, just under five, just under five millimeters. I don't know if you can see that up on the top camera. About right, four, four, four to five millimeters. Um, and find the po point where my glue starts here. And I'm just going to run it along. Okay, so you run it all the way down to the bottom. Take care when you get down to the corner. And go round, gently round the corner, and then straight down the bottom again 
gently around the corner and up to the final point where the glue starts, it starts here all the way up to, to here. There we go. So I've got a, a, you're never going to be able to see that on the front camera, but it runs all the way down, slightly high, starts slightly higher here, runs all the way down around the bottom corners and back up to here. Um, and because we use this, the, the stitching line is nice and right, round and keeps an equal distance away from the corners there. Um, and when we mark up and stamp our, um, or mark up and, and punch our holes through there, they're also going to go around the corners nicely. Uh, and they should look nice on your uh, MacBook Air as well. Okay. Um, now, there's two approaches to, uh, 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 there's probably more than two approaches to stitching, but uh, two common ways of doing uh, um, stitching. You can either um, use an awl, so you can use one of these little um, diamond handles, punch your holes through um, by hand as you stitch. Um, I don't like doing that because I'm not very good at it. Um, I prefer to use uh, these things, which are stitching, um, a pricking iron, sorry, and you use these to punch holes all the way through, all the way around the edge of the piece of leather, and then you stitch. Um, the other thing that you can use is uh, if you're using, if you printed off the pattern uh, and you've just got the holes from the pattern, um, you can use those and a either a an awl, a, a diamond awl, or just uh, a, a something with a sharp point on it. So you might be able to get, get away with your. Um, scratch all to mark, punch, punch through the holes, or a um, if you've got one, a small belt punch hole. Um, to be honest, I've never done that. It, it seems a bit excessive. For, um, the, the, really, you do need one of these pricking irons if you're going to be making anything from leather, um, or two of them actually, because you need the second one for going around the corners, uh, around the corner bits. Um, the, the way to use these, I'm, I'm actually going to. Uh, uh, because it's only two thin bits of leather, I'm going to wait until this is dry, and then we're going to punch right the way through with our, um, our pricking irons. Um, if you're working on thicker leather work, you can use these pricking irons to mark holes all the way around, uh, and then go through with your awl. Okay, so you can combine the use of the two. Um, but we're, we're not going through very much leather here, it's very thin. Um, so once this glue is dried, we'll punch our holes all the way around, um, and then we're ready to stitch. Um, so that's it, we're almost there, uh, but I'm going to leave this to dry, so uh, I'm going to come back in a couple of hours, uh, I'm going to go and get on with some real work, and then, uh, so I'm going to come back in a couple of hours, uh, and we will uh, carry on from there. So I'm going to let the glue dry, uh, we'll come back, punch our holes, and we'll take it from there. Okay, that's it, uh, I'll be back soon. Okay, so I'm back, uh, I've left this to dry, um, I've, I've left the glue uh, to set basically, um, and it's now, uh, it's nice, now nice, and, nice and dry, it should be well bonded together. Um, effectively now you've got your uh, MacBook case, um, so, uh, you know, uh, but you still need, to, still need to stitch it, that glue's not going to last forever. Um, and uh, to do that we need to first put the holes, stamp the holes uh, for the needles. Um, some people, uh, I think I mentioned before the, the various different approaches to that, so I'm going to uh, uh, stamp all the way through here um, in one go and then we'll do the stitching. Um, some people don't like uh, stitching, um, I quite enjoy it, I find it quite, um, uh, quite, quite relaxing. Um, I try to be a bit philosophical about it, you know, it can't be avoided. It does take some time, especially if you're doing a, a long, you know, a long three, three relatively long edges here. Um, but, you know, you have to focus on what you're doing, it's just time to relax, put some music on and, and uh, you'll be fine. Um, uh, so first we need to make the holes. The, the, in order to protect, when we're stamping the holes through here, in order to protect this uh, mat and your uh, work surface, um, I would take another old offcut, old piece of leather, um, thick leather here, which you can place underneath the, the item uh, while you're uh, um, uh, stamping your holes here. Um, or use a, 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 a you know, proper wooden board or something underneath the leather item um, otherwise because these healing mats there these will go through a healing mat or they will leave leave some pretty chunky holes in the, in the healing mat so try not to 
stamp through. Um, and I'll do that now. So um, I'll, I'll just get started and then I'll, I'll probably speed up the video. It'll be a bit tedious watching me stamp all the holes. Um, but we will, I'll show you in more detail when I get down to the bottom corner, just how we go around the corner. Because when you get to the corner, you need your two-pronged, uh, two-pronged pricking iron. So basically, pick a side to start. We've already marked our line with the wing divider on here. So the only things you really need to do is um, well, you need to be consistent, right? So you need to uh, keep this uh, um, at a right angle, try to keep it dead straight. If you go off at funny angles like that, it's going to come through the back of the leather at a funny angle. Um, and, and, and you don't want that at all. You want it to be as straight as possible. So um, keep it straight. Put the teeth into the little uh, line that you've, uh, the little groove that you've made with the, um, with the wing binders. We're going to go all the way through. So should find two two good wax with a mallet. Take those through. Line up the hole with the the last hole of the previous run. There we go. And once you get going, you should find get your stride. There we go. But do you know? Remember, keep it keep it up as upright as possible. You don't want, you don't want to be coming off at funny angles at the bottom. Um, like everything, uh, practice makes perfect. The, the more of more holes you punch, the more you use your pricking irons, the better you'll get with them. Um, so I'm just going to uh, fast forward this, and I'll run all the way around. I'll show you one of the corners. I'll slow it down so you can see one of the corners. But um, otherwise, um, off I go. Okay, so I've got now to this bottom corner here. I'm just going to show you going around the corner with this two two piece pricking iron. I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit with the top camera uh, so you can see a little bit clearer what I'm doing. Right, so there you go. So what, what we do with this is basically, because uh, you can't go around a corner with a big fat um, um, row of uh, holes, uh, uh, um, uh, spikes like that. So we just use the two prong pricking iron, put the hole, the first hole in the last hole that you made, and then, there you go, much easier to tap through because there's only two prongs on it. Put the first hole in the last hole we made again, and straight through. Nice and easy. It's not very complicated, uh, it's just a little bit slower than using the six prongs because obviously there's just two. All right, nice and simple. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put this on fast forward again and uh, finish off the rest of these holes. Uh, okay, so uh, we now have our MacBook case cut, glued, uh, we've got the holes pricked uh, and we're now ready to stitch. Um, so the stitching, uh, I'll just move these pricking irons out of the way. Um, the stitching, like I said earlier, it's, it's a tedious process, um, but uh, and it does actually take a, a fair bit of practice to get to get good at it. But um, if this is your first piece, uh, I'll try to give you some tips to, to make that, that, that process as easy as possible. Um, what you're going to need, you're going to need um, some nylon thread. So again, details of this um, are in the, um, uh, the pattern pack. Um, I buy this tiger thread. Um, it comes in all different uh, thicknesses as well. Um, I buy this tiger thread um, on eBay. It comes with two needles, uh, and you can uh, you can buy a whole roll like this um, if you're going to be doing a few items, or you can just buy the the length that you need. Um, 
the length of the um, actual piece of thread that you'll need is also in the, in the pattern pack. Um, but you can measure it if, if you don't uh, have the exact details. Uh, it's generally four to five uh, times. So four to five uh, times the length of the piece of stitching that you're going to do. So if we were just going to do that, um, that long edge, for example, um, you would need a piece that's four to five times uh, as long as this. Um, depending on the piece that you're doing, I always try, I, I would overestimate how much thread you need rather than underestimate it. If you get to the end of a long piece of stitching and, and you've underestimated how much thread you're going to need, um, you know, you get, it's going to be a bit of a nightmare because you'll have to, uh, ideally you'll have to do the whole lot again or you'll have to finish up and then start a new piece of thread to finish that last uh, um, bit that you haven't accounted for. Um, you don't really want to get yourself into that situation, so um, this stuff isn't expensive, so I would al always have a slightly longer piece of thread than, than you think you might need. Um, depending on, your, uh, on, on how you want to do it, you can, you can just do it in one, uh, one go with two massive long bits of thread, so you're going to be feeding them through. Uh, I'm going to keep things a little bit simpler and do it in, in two goes. So I'm going to stitch halfway round, uh, and then I'm going to end, and then I'm going to stitch another from the bottom um, back up to the top. Uh, it will just make the, the handling the thread and the needles a lot, a lot easier, um, a lot less uh, messy. So um, we'll get started. We'll get started with that now. Uh, but it's time to introduce the, the, the stitching pony. Um, the stitching pony is probably the most specialist uh, piece of uh, uh, leather tool that you're going to have. I can't imagine there's any other use for a stitching pony other than stitching, uh, uh, hand stitching items that, that you're going to uh, be making out of leather. Um, it's quite a simple uh, piece of kit. You, you would normally, I would say, put these under your, you sit, put these under your legs, so this comes through your legs, um, put your leather item in here, screw these together, and then it, uh, it basically acts like your hands, so it holds the, the item that you're going to stitch and that leaves your own hands free to do the stitching. Okay? Um, saddle stitching needs two needles, you just keep crossing over each other when you're stitching, so you need your two hands free and you don't want to be messing around holding a piece of um, big floppy uh, um, MacBook cover like this. So we're going to use the stitching pony, um, but so that you can see the process here on the camera, I'm not going to sit down, I'm not going to go to sit on my chair um, and sit on this thing, I'm just going to clamp it to the desk here um, and then, then I should be able to put the, put the piece of leather in it and do it standing up. It's not uh, ideal but uh, it's, it's also once you get, once you get into the flow um, it, it's not too bad. Um, so uh, I will just uh, clamp this down and then I'll show you how we put the piece of leather in and how we get started. Um, I'll also cut up the, the piece of thread and get them in, and then show you how to thread the, the needles, okay? All right, um, let's try and get this thread cut down to size. So I'm gonna do two stitching runs. I'm gonna do, uh, like I said, round the side to the bottom and then from the bottom round to the top. So I can cut this uh, in half. There's my scissors. There we go and put one to one side and start with this one piece. There we go, and then we've got our two needles, nice length of thread there, and we're ready to stitch. Um, we just need to get this thing into the stitching pony. Now, again, because it's a big item, uh, it's a little bit uh, too big probably for a stitching pony this size. Um, so let's try and find the best way. Probably the best way is gonna be to fold it in half like that, and then screw your stitching pony up, maybe down a little bit further. There we go. And now, now that's hold, holding that in place. Tighten that up nice and tight. Holding that in place, so I, I, I got my hands free just to stitch. I tend to stitch from the uh, furthest point away towards myself. Um, no reason, I don't see why you can't start here and go away from yourself, but I tend to come towards myself because I, so I can see what I'm doing. Um, so, we've got our needles through here. Um, before you start stitching, you're going to want to just centre centre those so that we can see that they're uh, the same length either side. And this first stitch here, uh, we're just going to go through 
uh, twice. So you're going to loop around the edge of the piece of leather here. Um, it's a sort of binding stitch, so you'll uh, go back through. You want to be careful when you go through that you don't catch this thread, okay? Um, we'll produce another video a little bit later, so I'm not going to go into detail about the stitching. Um, but we're going to do it once that way and once this way. Go through like that, okay? And then pull it up nice and tight. And we've got a double uh, loop, which is just going to bind those two bits together. So when you're pulling this bit apart to get your MacBook in and out, it's not going to uh, uh, rip this thread there. Um, and that's it. Now we're ready to stitch. So um, I always, um, when I'm stitching, start with my left hand. Uh, uh, and, then I, and, I, and then I follow up with my right hand. So um, in order to keep your stitching consistent, you just need to, 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 to whatever, whichever way you do it, stick to it, okay? Don't start with your left hand first and then on the next stitch go with your right hand or um, vice versa. Um, stick, stick to what you're doing, that's, that's the best advice. Um, and you'll, because these have got slightly slanted, the way these pricking irons work, it's got slightly slanted um, holes, I would always push in at the bottom of the hole on the left hand side, like that. So push it through, put this needle behind, pull it through, and then I'll go through the top of this hole, like that, there we go. Pull it tight and repeat. So push through the bottom with the left hand, right hand behind, pull the thread through, through the top of the, that hole, Pull like that. There we go, and off we go. Um, again, I'm not going to talk you through the whole stitching of the whole item. Uh, I'm going to now probably fast forward this video, and uh, until I get to the bottom uh, where we're going to tie off the first thread and start a second thread. So, uh, okay, off I go. Okay, so I think, so I, think uh, I don't know, this is, I'm, I'm about two thirds of the way through the first hole, uh, first line, first side, sorry. Um, I reckon that's probably taken me about five, six, maybe ten, maybe maximum ten minutes, not, not, not too long. Um, if you're just starting, this is one of the first pieces you've made, that might take you a lot longer, um, but don't worry. Uh, stitching, you see people like, you know, doing it on videos like this and you think, ah, oh, how do they manage to just be so consistent and have such rhythm and, you know, and you might be there like pulling it through, stabbing the thread, unthreading it. Like, it's a bit, when you start, it's a, it can be a bit uh, unwieldy, a bit of a, bit of a nightmare, but um, like everything, you know, it, it does get easier with time. The more you do it, you'll find that you'll find a um, you'll, you'll you'll find a process that works for you, uh, and then you'll you'll just uh, you'll find that your you, stitching is much uh, smoother and much more consistent. Um, the only thing that will help you really is, is having a good pricking iron, so you've got good uniform uh, holes, uh, making sure your glue is dry. And uh, making sure you use a consistent, use a consistent uh, method. So whichever hand you start with, start with that, top to bottom, like I said at the beginning. All right, I'm going to carry on. So I've just um, I've turned this round here, um, so I can stitch along the bottom. Um, I'm only going to go halfway, but you can see because of the size of this um, uh, uh, MacBook cover, it's a little bit floppy. So it's gonna be not going to be as easy as it was before, um, but still not too bad. Uh, if you find that it is really floppy, there's a couple of options. You can either put a couple of bit of little bits of wood or maybe a couple of rulers in the clamp here. 
um, to act to stop it flopping around um, or you can try and fold the leather over on itself and clamp it in um, one thing you should be careful of this um, on the stitching pony I've got here um, this metal uh, uh, screw that goes through and, and, and clips it together um, has got a little bit of sort of uh, dust or oil on it or something like that which if you're using a, a really light piece of undyed um, leather you want to keep that away from this um, screw because this screw will mark um, your piece of leather so if you fold it over and put it in basically if you're going to do that I would try to wrap the leather in, in some uh, material or put some material over that screw um, you don't want that screw mark in the bottom of your piece of leather work basically um, okay so I'm going to come around the bottom here basically exactly the same as before starting left hand first at the bottom pulling through right hand through at the top all right so we now got to uh, about halfway through the bottom and we start with a piece of thread that was five times the length of the area of the, of the line that we're going to stitch um, and i always think wow what, why five times that seems like a lot of thread um, but you'll be surprised how quickly it vanishes. Uh, uh, um, it gets sucked up by the, the, the additional width of the two pieces of leather and, and it's crossing each other at each time. So, um, and we've ended up with, with a couple of bits. Okay, perhaps a little bit longer than we needed it, but um, like I said, always better to um, give yourself a little bit more than you needed. Um, and I, I like to have a, a relatively long tail on here so it's locked on and it doesn't keep pulling off the thread. Um, so. We're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to finish this one um, and then we're going to re-thread our needle with that second bit of leather and we'll carry on. Um, but to finish, what we're going to do is just back stitch one, okay? So I'm going to go back one stitch over and also with this hand. So we've basically back stitched over one um, go back one hole instead of coming forward to the next hole um, and then I'm going to decide which is the back piece oh we're going to say this is the front where's the one with the uh, yeah this is where my pod leather is so I'm, this is going to be the front of the case so I'm then just going to run this one bring it forward again so it's the third third time it's run over there and no I'm not I'm going to change my mind I'm not going to bring it forward I'm going to back stitch one further back. So I've basically got two back stitches in there. All right, and then I've got me two, so I've gone back one stitch with my left hand and back two stitches with my right hand. You can't really see that at all. Um, and now I can just cut off, uh, cut off here and we'll just, we'll just put a lighter up against, gently up against those two edges then. It'll, it'll, it'll basically seal them off. Um, there are um, what they call uh, thread clippers or thread snippers, um, which are uh, small little handheld clippers for clipping off thread. Um, if you've got some of them, they're great because you get right up against the bit of leather and you don't leave much of a tail on the thread that's coming out. Um, for this, for just for now, I'm going to use a pair of scissors just for cutting off the thread here. Um, there we go, try and get as close up to the bit of leather as possible. Um, you can also use a sharp knife, a blade, but um, probably not, probably not the sense, most sensible idea. Ooh, um, because if you slip with the blade and cut your piece of leather, you're going to cut into the leather and it's going to knacker it. So, um, a pair of scissors or some uh, thread clippers would, would be great, and a lighter. Um, because this is nylon, you can just melt it down. So, I'm just going to gently get the flame up against the, those two edges there. Tap them down. There we go. That's nicely done. Now I'll re-thread the needle and get started with the other other bits. Okay, now I've got half of it stitched here and I've now got a choice um, whether I continue from the middle and go along to the, the far edge or whether I start at the far edge and I come back to the middle. Um, what I'm actually going to do for this is I'm going to start at the far edge 
because then I can do my two looping stitches and they're going to be uh, uncut and then we're going to come back and we're going to finish up in the middle. It does mean that both our threads will end in the, in the middle here, um, but uh, I would think that's a better solution than, than finishing uh, here because you're going to need to loop it around and then cut it, which is going to be a bit weird. So um, back in, I'm going to fold it again so it's a little bit uh, more rigid. I'm going to start, this edge is slightly longer, so it's going to take a little bit longer to do. There we go. And our two needles. I'm going to come through this side. There we go. All right, so let's center up those, center up this thread. There we go. And then we're going to do the binding stitch, remember? So we're going to go over, uh, let's do the left hand first, like usual. Back through the same hole that you've, as the same thread. Over the top there, and the same with this one. Just sit those, make sure they're sat nicely together. Pull them tight, there we go, and we've got our nice uh, two double binding thread there. Uh, that just keeps the edge together, and off we go. Uh, back down the long edge this time. Exactly the same as before. Left hand first, through the bottom, pull it through, pull it down. Right hand needle through the top, pull it through, and off we go. Um, I've hit the, the last um, hole that I stitched up to last time. I'm just going to back stitch again once here with both needles. Pull it tight and take this needle from the front side again back through to the back just, just for consistency, uh, just so that. Uh, where there is a, a little lump here where the two threads have been cut off that they're both on the back side of the map bookcase. Um, snip them off again. Close as possible. There you go, it's just a tiny little bit of fluff coming out the back there. Where's my lighter? There we are. Just melt that down. Touch it in, almost can't see it. Lovely. Okay. There we go. All done. All stitched. Um, if you are new to leather work and stitching, that probably took you about an hour. Um, I know when I started, stitching took me ages. Um, it took me then about 25 minutes, 30 minutes maximum, uh, and we're all done. So uh, let me just get this clamp out of the way. And we'll do the finishing touches. There we go. My clamps. My by stitching pony. Move the scissors out. Put these threads out of the way for now. Right, there we go. And we're pretty much there with our MacBook case. Uh, it's now glued, cut, glued, stitched. Uh, and the final thing to do is get your bone folder. Um, in my case, plastic bone folder um, or metal ruler or whatever you want to use. Um, and you're just basically going to run round run around the interior uh, and just break away any uh, excess glue so you don't want any glue stuck along the edge there so there we go let's run along break away any glue I've actually done a pretty good job uh, gluing this so there's not too much stuck in there and final thing if you have a cobbler's hammer just just run that along along your stitching not only will it uh, knock down the threads a little bit it'll just even them out 
There we go. One La Sap 13 inch MacBook case. Turn it over. Lovely. And that's it. We're all done. Uh, I'll go now go and get my MacBook and we can test uh, uh, the ultimate test uh, putting the MacBook in. So I'll, I'll just pop, pop you on hold quickly, go get my old 13 inch MacBook Air and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. There you go. Ta-da. You've now made your very own Lever La Sap 13 inch MacBook sleeve. Um, all right, that's it from me. Um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, build along tutorial. Um, it's one of our first build along tutorials, so we're still learning. Uh, if, you've, if you have any comments, feedback, uh, suggestions, please let me know. Um, I would love to hear from you, love to hear what you think, um, love to know how you would improve the design, uh, if you have any ideas on that, um, or if you have any questions, if anything was unclear, if, if I skipped over something uh, uh, and it didn't make sense, let me know and I'll get back to you. Um, but for now, uh, enjoy your MacBook case. Uh, I hope Vladimir will like his. Uh, this is going with him to his new job. And uh, I'll say goodbye.